All right, you guys tired of looking at this during every review? It's about to change. As you can see, I'm beginning to use painter's tape to mask off areas of the track and road. And this is about to be a completed area. Now one thing I didn't like about my last layout was how flat it was, so I've got some scrap wood here and I've screwed down these several pieces of scrap wood to help with low-lying terrain that's just not laser flat because what terrain is laser flat? And here we have sculpt mold sculpt mold helps with making smooth transitions over the terrain and then it's paintable and then eventually we can add ground foam and maybe even static grass if I can figure that out. Sculpt-a-mold according to the instructions is two parts sculpt-a-mold to one part water. I can't say sculpt-a-mold for some reason. But anyway, so I'm gonna put uh, water in here. There's these handy dandy little lines on this Woodland Scenics thing. I couldn't find my big tray, but uh, so I know, you know, how to put one part water to this two part sculpt mold. So that is what I'm gonna do. And then I'll be over here applying it. Okay, I got my road beds all taped off. You wanna go right to the edge. So you don't wanna leave massive gaps that you're just gonna have to re-tape later and paint. But you definitely want to cover up the track completely, in my opinion. You don't want the stuff getting down in there as expensive as track is these days. Uh, I'm kind of uh, molding this with my hands. Uh, they said that you know mixing it with your hands is good too. Then we just get kind of a clump here, and we're going to start on here. We're going to work our way into a ridge. So start thick up at the ledge and spread it out and thin it out as you work your way down. And you're going to do this all the way around any fixtures. Uh, some people use a lot of different stuff to uh, to make this paper, like toilet paper bunched up. Uh, there's something a little more popular that's escaping my mind at the moment, but I'm just using this scrap wood here. Obviously it's expensive, you know, you don't want to do that unless it's just laying around and I'm gonna call the dumpster eventually or somebody that'll buy it from you. But here's the deal and I've made this mistake before too. Once you've got it to where you're tapering it off down to the level of the plywood, you don't want to you want to kind of really taper it off. You don't want these big fat ridges. I mean you can sand them down but you can taper it off and make these little hills the more the better. I've even thought about, and I might experiment with this here, I've got a bunch of spare cork road bed, so I might just use some cork road bed as well to make these terrain areas here. The corners are really sharp, so it usually takes a little more. And don't worry about form too much, because like I said, this is sandable, but I am trying to push and pinch this edge down so it's not so evident you know when we're actually applying paint and stuff that there's this pronounced ridge because not every hill has like a pronounced ridge at the edge As a matter of fact none of them really do now you're wanting to uh, get this stuff applied right after mixing it will start to dry on you even if it's in some sort of 
basket like container like we have if you happen to run out just haul your rear end over and make some more quickly it's pretty easy so I see some pronounced edge there I don't like that nature doesn't have many straight angles so we're trying to get that squared away it looks like we're about tapped out already so we're going to have to make some more of this. Now obviously if you make this too soupy, you can just add more sculpt -a mold in there. Oopsie, this is why you protect the track. Look at that. Um, you add more sculpt -a mold in there. You want this about the consistency of some real thick cottage cheese. Maybe, maybe a little thicker. But... I hear the more water you put in this, the more likely it is to uh, take a long time to dry, especially under the undersides. That's already drying, so that tells me, you know, I think I have a good water mix here. If it does start to dry and you haven't gotten the edges pinched like you like, don't forget you can just sand it later it's no big deal okay there's another landform done I think you get the idea so I won't film the others I will pick a little cork roadbed or something to make some smaller ones around the area so I know it looks like a drunk chef making pancakes just dropped of several all over the layout but I made some smaller terrain areas this looks silly right now but when you consider paint Static grass, ground cover, it's all going to come together. And even, those are, even though these are barely off the level of the layout, you got to realize in scale they're a good foot or two high hills. So, you know, it's a little bit of hill, some variation, along with the bigger hills that we've mixed in. Okay, everything is dried, and I hear you don't even really have to dry it. So I did sand down some really pronounced edges. But overall, we just have this blob of several different terrain features. And now it is paint time. What we're going to do is apply this paint. I just went to my local home improvement store. I picked out like a lighter brown because this is going to be a late fall. So I want that lighter brown undertone. It's really hard for me because I'm colorblind. But it's red and green color deficient technically, so I can see colors. It's just hard second guessing what's on the backdrop from trackside scenery. So it's like a late summer color, so this will be the undertone of that. While the paint's wet, we'll be sprinkling on some turf. Then once all that's dry, we'll scenic cement and do static grass. Obviously, you're going to want to make sure your paint is thick and stirred if it's settled at all from bringing it home from the paint shaker at the home improvement store. This has been here probably close to four or five days at this point because I have so many different shades of earth tones already here, but this one I wanted a little lighter like I mentioned earlier. I do like a tray and a roller because I uh, had used paint brushes before over the entire thing. And what that caused was brush strokes really bad. Now, when it's covered up with turf and stuff, it's hard to see anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and use the paint roller anyway. And in the areas that that doesn't cover well, we'll use the paintbrush we have back here. I usually just get a mini paint roller because... It's extremely uh, difficult to stay where you want to with the large ones. Making sure everything's clear here, I just start going to town on the paint. Now on the ridges you want to make sure you're covering all that white because that will definitely show through when you're in the process of trying to apply the other layers. So we'll do this. You don't need to see it. I just gave you about all the tips you need. I'm going to turn off the camera now and go to town. 
Things are already starting to look better as I've gotten that back area painted. I just have to take a paintbrush and go along the edge so we don't end up with big old swaths of paint on the back board like that. Now, should I really care? No, because long after I die, my wife will be selling this house, I'm sure, because she wants to live in a cabin in the woods. And they'll be taking down the backdrop, whoever she hired to do it, and they'll be like, oh, there's paint there. Oh, well, this is a utility room. So it doesn't really matter, but I'll try to make it neat and get the paint from staying on the pegboard. If you haven't noticed, I said the heck with it, with the pegboard. My wife needs something uh, to be angry at me anyway after I die because it'll help her get over the grieving process. So like I said, she'll have her crews down here taking everything apart and they will see that this pegboard's painted and it'll take $5 off the home value. What I'm doing now is dabbling paint in the little white areas that did not get paint. There's a little couple divots and stuff, little areas where this stuff kind of uh, dried funny. So I'm filling in all those areas. All the paint is wet. I did try to get closer to the road there. Um, but we'll be able to cover that up with some gravel and such, some dark gravel on the side of this asphalt road afterwards. You do want to get up close to the paint painter's tape on the roadbed because you don't want big gaps in your roadbed where you're trying to cover up wood with ballast or anything. So you're trying to get that roadbed right up to the edge or very close to where the ballast profile would cover it. All right, all painted. Definitely not the best but I have to go fast and I'll tell you why next. Okay, we're going for a late summer type feel. And while the paint is wet, it helps to adhere the turf. Here I've got Woodland Scenics blended turf. This is Earth Blend. We're gonna layer different blends on top of each other while this paint is wet. So I'll be doing some of this, some of green, you know, as the grass is dying out in the late summer from the excessive heat of the plains. Because I know you see some landforms here, but these landforms are very, very minimal. I mean, to scale, I think the tallest one's like three quarters the height of an SD70 ACE, so it's not that high. This is just some land variations. And you definitely want to work it up against the edge because the one thing I learned about the edges is that's kind of the tell of a lot of model railroads when the edge is not painted or the coursework or the um, vegetation and such is not in that area. Now on previous layouts, this would be probably my last step, except for sometimes scenic cementing. Sometimes I wouldn't even do that. But we are doing static grass, so this is one of many layers that's going to go on this layout. All right, let me wrap that up. I think you have a good enough idea how to shake this stuff out of a woodland scenic What I'm shaker, doing next but... is incredibly sparse uh, woodland scenic's fine turf soil. Just some areas where soil is going to be showing out through just very very little i mean there's like maybe four or five tablespoons on this whole thing i have some woodland scenic medium green turf this is a media a coarser turf to provide a little more texture it does not like coming out of the shaker much <coughs> it compresses easily so but again, very, very sparse. We're layering here. And uh, as the grass dies off, there'll be some thicker grasses that are still prevalent. And those tend to stay green a little longer when they're near water source. So that's what we're doing here. Now this third layer of coarse turf, the medium green, really sets the tone because I've got my light browns in there and now I'm adding the grass that's still alive. If you look here to the left, 
It's a little more deserty, a lot more dry. As you pan here to the right, you can see that I've actually added more green because I didn't like the level of late summer this was in. This was almost desert <laughs> late summer, so added a little more green to it. Uh, and you can continue to do that to try to get it going. Now you could leave it just like this almost, but that static grass is just going to bring it to a whole nother level if I can get now it I've to work properly. I've got some Woodland Scenics burnt grass here, and I'll be sprinkling this on as kind of the ending here. I don't have a shaker for this, so but again, it's going to be sparse because you don't want it to look back like desert again. But we're just kind of peppering that in there to force that late summer appearance. Okay, we're all dried up here. As you can see with the little yellow there, I picked some areas randomly on the layout to put. Some wildflowers, mostly, you know, the yellow dandelions that come up in the late summer. So now we're going to spray this with some Woodland Scenic Cement, scenic cement and uh, the Scenic Sprayer. I can tell you right now I'm not a fan of this Scenic Sprayer. It displaces uh, a lot of the turf uh, and it can cause kind of an uneven appearance. So I'm trying to stay as far away as I can from it. You know, but I think there's some finer misters out there that may work. I know the glue is kind of thick, so that could be part of the problem. But I'm trying to get this applied as best as I can. All right, let's talk static grass. I have a Woodland Scenics grass applicator here. There's several different brands. I suggest if you get the Woodland Scenics, you get the separate power plug with it. Uh, that you have to buy separately to get max voltage and ensure that's seated at all times because it slid out and I could see there's a drop in static. <sighs> the thing about Woodland Scenics I'm not really a fan about is this is plastic, it's not metal. It helps not shock you, but that negative charge is in there in that metal plate at the bottom. So you don't want to put too much static grass in here. It'll block that and it won't stand up, I noticed. And you got to keep this thing really low to the ground. So I'll show you the steps for that. Um, there are other static applicators, mostly European market. It looked like that were way, like, seem to do a better job. But this is what I'm dealing with here in the American market. Woodland Scenics um, also has seven millimeter grass and two to four millimeter flock. I've used the flock and it looks a little bit like mold. I'll show you that real quick. So just looks a little uh, moldy or um, just like peach fuzzy. So it's a little too short for HO scale. I think it would be about knee high grass if you use about seven millimeters. So that's what I'm using. There's a light green and a medium green. I mix these and put them in the the hopper here. <clears throat> now there is a little screw post here so you'll want to remove that twist the lid off. Whether you put that background on it's up to you on the screw it does twist it and lock but if you're really worried about dumping all your static grass you'll want to put that screw back on. Once you have the grass on the hopper I just kind of shake it around to mix it up and then we get ready for glue because you want to be completely ready to go. That glue dries fast. Once again, a Woodland Scenics product here, Static Tac. Uh, not necessary. You can use all sorts of different types of glues, but you want to get a paintbrush and whatever type of glue you have decided to use. And you can go to an area, an exposed area, uh, probably not with the ground stuff if possible. Because that does come up, I'll show you here. It's kind of as we go over that, that'll start blotting up. And although my effects turned out really well, because that kind of provided a happy accident and a surface for that static grass to kind of come up and make different variations in height on, it's still not the best idea because it's going to really cling to your paintbrush there. I'm just going to show you a little area here. Of static grass because there's a lot of static grassing to do <laughs> but once that glue is down you want to have your Woodland Scenics 
static grass applicator plugged in and ready to go. There's a power switch here. <clears throat> you plug in this little electro deal and this helps direct the static grass and you don't hit power until you hit power before you flip this thing upside down or else it'll all just fall out. So power it definitely shows that there's power in the area or all around it and then you're just shaking that thing so close because that static charge isn't, isn't the greatest with this and you do get somewhat of a haystack appearance but it does end up being uh, standing up pretty well and this <clears throat> because you're putting it down on the surface gets a little funky at times you just turn it off and clear it off now if you get down to the surface you can see that that's standing up fairly well uh, but that Woodland Scenic static grass applicator doesn't have the power to stand it up as well as I would have liked so I'd go over it a couple times even without any static grass in the hopper to get it to stand up and then it looks a little more like this over here where it stood up a little better all right let me catch you up to where we are on this project here as you can see on the front rail that's a lot lighter colored than the back rails there's a couple ways you can paint your rails uh, airbrushing is really easy from what I understand but I decided to use Woodland Scenics track pins they're track painter pins as you can see there uh, mixed results with these this is steel rail the big problem is in short order the tip gets very worn now they give you an extra tip but really you probably need two or three extra tips in a package but I have shown you what that already looks like on these back rails I'll show you what happens when the pin has a really kind of uh, used applicator there it's still pretty good but it does bounce off um, the ties especially when it's new and that causes to be like a rippling effect over the ties you can kind of see that happening back here so those little rail spikes they're molded into the ties to hold the rail in place you really have to go over that a couple times or it'll bounce off when you get to a switch I suggest definitely avoiding the points but that is about it as you can see obviously I didn't have to show this step but I pulled the painters tape off you can see that thin profile left behind by getting that painters tape really close to the cork roadbed edge so that that way when I put down the ballast it's no problem it's not going to be um, something that's got to go spread very wide to cover up that area now that the ties or the rail I should say are all painted I'm going on here with a track eraser and clearing up the railhead because that's going to be where your conductivity for being able to run trains is going to occur so the railhead needs to be cleaned off of any paint make sure you don't have paint remnants on it and I'm just going back and looking very carefully because some areas need a second and third swing through now we come to the part that scares the crap out of me every time its backdrop application so I've been spending quite a bit of time getting all of this ready the rails are all painted but over here as you can see under the layout we've got a backdrop all spread out to flatten out but I'm just gonna turn around and roll it back up hoping it keeps most of its flatness as I position it to 
roll alongside this pegboard over here where there'll be pre-positioned double-sided tape to catch it in certain locations and adjust it as necessary. All right, you can't really see that well, but I do have some clear double-sided tape positioned about 23 inches up for a 24 inch backdrop. Just to start on one side. Now I vacuumed off this layout, but that doesn't mean stuff can't get in the backdrop. So I'm going to be putting the protective paper that came with the backdrop from Trackside Scenery over the layout before I apply the backdrop. So as you can see, this was a 97 inch custom backdrop, 97 by 24, and it came with protective paper. So I'm using that to cover up the layout. Yes, I have static grass, but I need something light that won't flatten it out. If it does flatten out a little bit, you can go back with your static grass applicator without anything in it, but charge and stand the grass back up. I've already done that a couple of times without issue. Now, some people would say, why don't you put the backdrop up first? Well, then you got to protect the backdrop from paints and spray glue and everything else. And I think I have less of a chance to ruin the backdrop this way than if I did it first and then put everything on it. So now we apply. Okay, roads are lined up as you can see there. Um, I've just got to work this even further down. I said by flattening it out and rolling back up a little bit, it does help. Um, but it's really, really difficult because backdrops they tend to try to go one angle or the other. It's hard to get them squared up perfectly. So I've got these double-sided tape points fairly far and few between. And then once you get to the middle, it's really no adjusting. I'm not going to tell you what type of double-sided tape because I don't like it. It gets really sticky. So it's harder to readjust than I thought. People say use adhesive glue so you can readjust. I just wanted to do this that way you don't have to squeegee everything down and there could be ripples uh, this has tended to work for me in the past so I'm gonna go ahead and continue unrolling this had it in a very loose roll but manageable when it's this long okay looking pretty good looks like I had the same problem I had last time yeah. trackside scenery backdrops which is uh, that the road kind of starts at just the slightest of an angle and I have my road dead on but it doesn't look too terrible if we go down the track side I'm gonna lower this we're gonna zoom a little bit looks pretty decent um, with the backdrop up now, I can finish certain patches of static grass. And that way, um, I can kind of blend it in better. As you can see, the lighter areas of static grass are more matched to what's going on in the backdrop there. But it does have a mixture and some spots, so not too bad. And I could go back and lighten up the surface of the road to match better because this blacktop is a little darker it's like the sun shining at a certain level uh, back there but overall not too shabby uh, trackside.scenery.com is the backdrop it does most of the work you know but there was quite a bit of work done to this particular eight foot section when you consider terrain painting static grass, track painting, and then we've still got to do ballast. And I'm going to be able to protect this backdrop with the ballast by just having something like a big sheet of cardboard or wood as I'm spraying down the ballast areas and applying that. And of course the grade crossing plates as well. If you get right down on it, you can see some of the terrain variations I did and how that does merge pretty well with the backdrop in a lot of locations there. For ballast, I'm taking a medium ballast from Woodland Scenics. I'm mixing it with cinders, the gray blend with the cinders. 
I'm not doing too many cinders. That's about it. I just want to give the ballast a speckled appearance. I'm going to fill the rest of this with medium ballast and shake it to all creation. What you have here is a nice cinder sandwich until we start shaking it up. Now after shaking it, you see a nice healthy mix of darker and lighter. As the dust is settling from the cinders, I have these Woodland Scenics grade crossing areas here. And the one thing you want to make sure when you're putting these down just check the fit, make sure they're good area. And then you can sand off any excess to make it smooth. Like I've got a track nail right here that's not going to fly. So I'll have to get that out of there. And then use an adhesive glue. But you're going to want to keep an inside track open for the wheel flanges to get through. So do not have this tucked up against one side. You'll cause derailments. And then as soon as you have placed it down before the glue dries, run something through, run several things through to make sure they work. Alright, I've installed the Woodland Scenics grade crossing plates. As you can see, I was using uh, some paint, I mean some glue, to get that down. Got a little bit right there, and some pieces are kind of tricky, so before I actually run anything through, I'm going to dry. I think I used light enough glue that I could rip it up if necessary. But the goal is just inside tracks. Make sure there's plenty of space on that inside rail on each side so the wheel flange can pass through. And then if you can, leave a little space on the outside too is what I do. We'll get it away from the grade crossing area to give it time to dry. I've put our ballast in here. This is a coffee creamer thing, but it has a nice little spout. I'm going to shake that up and start applying ballast here. You can also use uh, paints to do the ties. I'm just not doing that at the moment. It's too time intensive and I can go back and do it. So you get your ballast profile. You want it to be kind of angular. It's okay to go over with ballast. Um, we have vacuums. We're going to bust out a paintbrush that's going to flatten this out pretty nicely. So. For now I'm just going to go along the edges and make a slight ballast profile just enough to cover up that bare woodwork and cover up the cork roadbed color. You can paint all the cork roadbed if you want gray so it helps. I just simply do the areas that are switches because you can't have too much ballast definitely in the points of those switches. So. The rest of it I just leave regular color and it gets covered up with this ballast. So I'll continue that and then we'll be back. Now one thing before I get too far ballasting, if you've seen any of my How to Build a Layout series from the past, you'll know I tell you to keep end ties. we got to cut off end ties and slide them into these areas that were previously gaps for connectors. So I'm going to go do that. You sand them down and slide them in. Now these little end ties have rail spikes and I just snip them off with rail snippers even though you shouldn't use rail snippers because uh, rail snippers are going to get dull but I use it anyway and then I sand them down. Might need a little more abrasive sandpaper than the sanding block but I'll get it sanded down to where you don't want those rail spikes or any mold left behind raising up your rail which can cause derailments. The thing I've really found helpful with the end ties is not only do you need to make sure there's no gap from where it was molded into another piece, so if you want to get that off there, again rail snipper is probably not the best thing to use, but you can also just face them down on some sandpaper, flatten them that way, and that'll go a lot faster. You might get a little more worn surface, but it looks realistic in a sense, and I'll show you that in a moment. See, that one's still raised on this edge. Now when the ballast is all down and mixed and you've got that pattern repeating, it won't matter as much. Uh, that they're a little off, but that's uh, all sanded down. What matters is you don't want those rail heads lifting up that rail. So you can see 
kind of my worn out ties here but look how easily that slides under there and does not affect the rail at all you get the spacing right and then you can spacing and the alignment left right correct and you can just ballast right over it no effect on the rail height all right main line is ballasted when i go do the center of the rail to fill in that ballast i do heavy heavy cinders uh, to kind of simulate all the gunk and dark grease that comes off of uh, the underside of the cars all right we're working on ballasting now and the first step you want to do is get a paintbrush and just push all of that ballast in between the ties on both sides you're going to want to make either flat or ridged if you have a double main or a triple main or something like that in between the the lines but after you've run it in between each one of the ties you go back and brush it back down then so you're trying to get all the ballast off the tie surfaces then you go back and create a ridge that's like an even ballast profile so for the center you're going to want to spread all that into the ties leaving minimal on top of the ties if you can get it all off the top of the ties great um, because you don't see ballast as heavy as it is in real life just sitting on top of railroad ties much unless somebody's put it there so <clears throat> you're wedging everything in to in between the ties brushing it back off so that you have ballast in between all the ties and then making the edge profile once you've done all that and you're happy with the appearance and this takes a while I spent about an hour on one little maybe two foot portion of this uh, to get it the way I wanted once you're done with all that then you can go back with a vacuum and straighten out the edges you know it's not perfect uh, it shouldn't be perfect but it can be kind of linear kind of straight looking so it looks better I'll show you what the finished product looks like uh, when I did a probably about an hour or two on one little short section over here so this is my ballast job kind of completed I've taken a vacuum cleaner and gotten just a little pinpoint area to suck up all the edge to make the ballast profile somewhat even then I can go back with static grass or something else flock or ground turf to fill in some of the areas that were sucked away from the edge but in general that is what you want and then once that's done you can get ready to spray everything down okay what I have here just a board to protect the backdrop and I've got isopropyl alcohol about 30% it's a really high percentage like 99% isopropyl so I did like, like 7 to 1 or 6 to 1 ratio and I'm just gonna wet down this track I have a really fine mister but it does need to be soaked don't worry about the rail tops we'll go over those with a track cleaner afterwards so you're just gonna you want a fine mister because Otherwise, it's going to displace the ballast you just worked really hard to get, but you got to get this soaked. What you're doing is breaking surface tension for the glue, which you can use 50% Elmer's, 50% water. You can use scenic cement, which I just happen to have already ready. So I'm just going to use that because I've got a lot of leftover Woodland Scenic stuff from the last layout. Next we have the scenic cement here, just to uh, see that's going to soak in, it looks like it will. If it doesn't, it tells you that, you know, the surface tension isn't broken. I don't know with uh, scenic cement if it needs this alcohol prep or not, but I know for a fact that it's needed when you mix glue and water. This, uh, Oh, I don't like scenic cement uh, sprayers. They get real clogged real easy because of the glue. Well, all that's left really is to enjoy. This is the result. I dropped a barn in here. 
I cleaned off all the track and I added a bumper and wired the programming track take a track eraser and clean everything off because there's a thin layer of glue there and that is your scene eight foot long needs some trees and stuff but pretty much completed so I hope this helps you figure out how to do a simple farm scene in the future thanks for watching we'll see you next time right here on the channel take care